Hi there, my name's Ushi Nunny and welcome to Audio Talks, presented to you by Harman. And in this episode, we're going to explore what happens when the exacting standards of new generations of digital natives meet design inspiration, technical innovation and engineering excellence. The audio luxumer is born. Could this be the most sophisticated consumer yet? I'm thrilled to be joined by some of Harman's foremost luxury audio experts recording live at the high-end audio tech conference in Munich to discuss this fascinating new arrival to the audio market. Welcome to the podcast, the Senior Director for Product Strategy and Planning for Luxury Audio at Harman, Jim Garrett. Hello, sir. How are you? Great to see you. Welcome back to the podcast, sir. And we welcome for the first time the Director of Global Engineering for Luxury Audio at Harman, Paul Neville. Welcome, Paul. Hello, Ashley. Hey, great to see you. Welcome both. Okay, so listen, let's start at the very beginning. What is the Luxumer and what do they want? Jim? (laughs) That is a fantastic question. So... (laughs) The Luxumer is a new generation of consumer, a uh, cross-generational consumer that is interested in simplicity. So when you think about how we've grown up with mobile devices and how easy those are and intuitive they are to use, they expect those same types of interactions with their hi-fi components, their AV components. Nice. Okay. I'm totally gened up on the Luxumer there. That's absolutely brilliant. Like you say, they're cross-generational. They kind of come from all backgrounds. They just have this interest in convenience, high quality, and just getting the best possible experience in the easiest way, which is very resonant with, I think, uh, what we all want really from life. So um, what's different about the Luxumer and previous generations of audio lovers, would you say? I think that simplicity that they're expecting in the the UI UX portion of it, it extends to how easy is the product to take it home and get it operational. Yeah. They don't want to read a thick owner's manual. <laughs> they don't want all the complexity of how do I choose these components? How do I cable them together? What cables do I have to go buy? Yeah. That complexity, I think those days are gone. People are still looking for the ultimate performance, mm. high performance. But again, that it's got to have that simplicity, that ease of use. Sweet. Okay. So the Luxumer is actually demanding, you know, totally new standards of user experience and in totally new ways. But are they loyal in new ways as well? Because the impression I get of, you know, folks who are very hot and convenient, etc., is that they tend to be a bit more fickle. But what about the Luxumer? Well, I think they are going to be loyal if you give them and deliver on that simplicity there. So if you've got that ease of use, the intuitive nature of the products, they're going to stick with that. That's what they want. And if you stray from that and put the complexity back in it, that's where you're going to lose them. Oh yeah, that's very relatable. There's a great saying these days, convenience is the killer app. And I I totally agree. It's like the the last best convenient experience you had is the one that everyone else has to compete with. So in terms of like the relationship between a luxumer and a brand that they choose to associate with. So they're, they're kind of looking for this loyalty, this amazing service. What else are they looking for from a brand today? I think it's the authenticity of that simplicity. Yeah. So if you've got that approach, that design approach, it's intuitive. Yeah. They know that if they buy a product from that brand, that they're going to have that similar experience with them. And when you stray from that, that's when you'll lose them as the customer. So we, we have to be true to ourselves and, and to that simplistic approach of the products. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Uh, I know from personal experience that, you know, my tolerance for having a, a bad customer experience with anything, it's just trending towards zero. And I, I feel I'm not alone. So it's nice to see this being reflected <laughs> by the folks making high end audio as well. And, you know, the modern looks humor seems to be quite different or even diametrically opposed to this whole concept of, you know, fast consumerism, buying the latest thing and getting rid of it very quickly and then buying another latest thing. You know, all generations are just not having this anymore. Um, you know, is there a sustainable aspect to this as well? I think absolutely there is. And when you dig into each of the generations, uh, it's a a core aspect of, you know, Gen Zs, but millennials, Gen Xers, any of us, uh, boomers, especially, Mm. you think of these products as really heirloom types of products. And so from a quality standpoint, these are not inexpensive investments to make and Mm. you want something that's going to last. So you're looking for that quality. Of course, the audio performance quality is there, but the build quality, the sustainability, how was it crafted and created? Is it designed to last a long time? Is it something that's going to be handed down to my kids and future generations? Uh, There's a lot of products like that specifically when you get to audio, these things could last decades and do get passed down generation to generation. Wow. Designing an intergenerational product is perhaps the ultimate sustainability hack. A household won't need to buy this again for decades. That, that's sensational. 
Correct, yeah. And, and talking about the design, I'd like to bring in your good self, Paul. Now, um, we live in an age of selfies and digital twins and social media lifestyles. What does this mean for the modern consumer in terms of what they need from a design point of view? I think from a design point of view, they, they look for simplicity as well. They've got modern, simple interiors and they're looking for modern, sleek products to fit their interiors. They don't want black boxes. Um, they need stuff that fits in on, sits on a credenza, has lighter tones, sharp engineering, but it fits in with their lifestyle and sometimes a pop of colour as well, something that kind of stands out from the crowd and, and is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And when you say a pop of colour there, I think of the classic L100s that we all kind of know and love so well. Absolutely. Also a kind of zero tolerance for those towers of black with the wires pouring out of the back. It it doesn't really work so much these days. But how much of this do you think is down to, you know, our good selves like audio nerds? And uh, how much might be down to significant others and spouses, etc.? Is that a factor to be uh, dealt with? Absolutely. These days, I think, you know, you have to have the buy-in of the whole family for you to have a winning product. It's got to look and feel good. And the whole family have got to, you've got that pride of ownership when your your family says, oh, I love those. Yeah, that's brilliant, Dad. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. It's a statement piece, you know, but it's got to work for everybody in the household, particularly the significant others. So it's got to work with the kids, the significant others. It's got to have convenience, style, a very small amount of, you know, cabling or or possibly even zero cabling. But talk to us a bit about your own household, Paul. I mean, do you have folks in your household who give you feedback on the products you're working with? And Absolutely. I've got two uh, Gen Z daughters who I've watched growing up and, yeah. and obviously I've been in audio for many years. So they've been brought up on audio products and they've been brought up on hi-fi racks. But now, you know, the true, you know, a product's a winner when they can just walk up to it and use it. You walk in and secretly they're, they're in the room, they've been using the product and they've got a big smile on their face. So, oh. and they've been brought up on the digital media and social media, but more and more they're turning to physical media as a way of switching off from that. Yeah the social media world and and getting away from it when they need to because they as they mature you can see they're changing um put up on bluetooth so you have to have the connectivity of bluetooth products these days but the best quality bluetooth you can get yeah but you know there's that they're interested in vinyl and cds they're they're kind of why is this physical media dad how do you use it and when i see them (sighs) listening to it and actually without their phone I, th- I think, yeah, we've we've caught them there. We've got them caught in the trap. They love the audio <laughs> and they're, they're on that journey. <laughs> yeah, that's I love that. So if they kind of switch off their phone, that's like mission accomplished. That's Absolutely. So cool. I think in the modern world, we're all looking for sometimes yeah. a bit of space to relax and, and be away from that interconnected world. And yeah. uh, it's for Gen Zs, you know, they're brought up on that. So it's even harder. So if you can achieve that, by reading a book or listening to music, which is my perfect uh, way of, of getting away from it all. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's why I think that physical media is coming back. That's so interesting. We actually had an Audio Talks episode with uh, Cameron Schaefer, the CEO of Vinyl Me Please, alongside the wonderful Chris Dragon, who I, I believe you both know. And they were talking about this idea of disconnecting from our always connected digital lives. I mean, connectivity is important, but the kind of ritual and space that you create for listening to a vinyl record is mm-hmm. such an exquisite experience to have, particularly for uh, Zoomers and uh, Gen Zs these days. Yeah, it is. I, I remember... I was working on a vinyl project a few years ago and I was getting back into vinyl, yeah. dusting down my collection, sitting nice. there listening to a record. My daughter walked in and said, Dad, what are you doing? You're just <laughs> listening to music. And she didn't understand that you could, you didn't need to be on your tablet or your phone. You could just listen to wow. music. Yeah. And then, yeah, roll forward a few years and I can see she's doing just the same. So. Fantastic. That's solid parenting right there. I love it. Mission accomplished. Good man. Thank you. I think it is okay to uh, single task. We're so used to a multitask <laughs> yes. world, right? Absolutely. To, to sit down and actually yeah. engage in something yeah. and focus on it. Amen. That's oh. what music's for. Wow. Well, yeah. 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 I want to go and listen to a an album now. But uh, anyway, no, we won't do that just yet. Um, so talk to us a bit about the modern lux humour. They demand meaning from the form, to the design. They demand perfection, nothing less, from the function and absolute authenticity from the brand. What does this actually look like? 
Well, I think uh, we we have it in some of our new products. <laughs> this is where we've really wanted to take the brand. Uh, and we've done it in a unique fashion with a, a very historic and retro style to it. But having that simplicity, what Paul just talked about of, of how easy and intuitive the products are to use, that's something that we wanted to design into the products right from the beginning. Yeah. Still have them look old, but that modern convenience, the features, the connectivity, the intuitive nature of the UI and the UI. UX part of it that was all really designed in from the beginning. So, and we nice. really wanted to create the best of both worlds in that respect. Oh, phenomenal, Jim. And I'm just curious because, like, obviously, the, the electronics and the cutting edge, the state of the art, all the cool stuff under the hood, it, it feels like that would be on your roadmap anyway. But it feels like there was a bit of a eureka moment in terms of the design. You know, where did that come from? Yeah, there was indeed. So when you look at this brand, it's such a historic brand. So many great things that have happened in our history. When we were coming up on the 75th anniversary uh, a couple of years ago, we were going to introduce a specific uh, special edition version of the L100. We had reintroduced that product around 2019. Yeah. And a couple of years later, we thought, well, this is one of the most iconic JBL loudspeakers of all time. So Absolutely. what better product to create an anniversary product around than that one? And at the time, uh, we were actually in uh, the Japan region and we were going around to some vintage hi-fi stores. And I'm a, one of the resident historians here at Harman, but uh, JBL used to make some component audio back in the late 60s, early 70s. And we ran into one of these integrated amps at a hi-fi shop in Japan. Amazing. And as we were sitting there looking at this piece, just the way the, the knobs and the switch gear and the beautiful walnut casework on it, just a bygone era of how electronic were done. Yeah. And we thought, oh my gosh, if we're doing a 75th anniversary product, we have to make an amplifier that looks like this. Amazing. But we've got to have all this modern connectivity, all the features that everyone expects, and certainly the performance, you know, ultra modern performance in that respect. But let's make it look like this 1960s era JBL product. And that's where that original piece, the SA750, came about for the 75th anniversary. That's so cool. My goodness. So like, you know, this is state of the art stuff. The looks humor demands better design, better performance, better connectivity, but also complete convenience. Uh, what kind of engineering stuff did you put in under the hood to deliver this state of the art modern functionality behind this very cool and evocative design statement? We came up with uh, a new remote that is lifestyle remote that you don't need, as Jim talked about earlier you don't need to read a big manual to work out how to use it it just does what it says on the tin and it's easy to use you pick it up and use it intuitively we've got bluetooth built in there so it's the latest bluetooth module aptex hd aptex has the adaptive so that's easy for anyone to walk up with their phone and pair with it and it's got all the latest high resolution streaming services built in. So using a connect model with your favorite streaming service, you can just connect to these products. Wow. Wow. And how do you kind of look at the performance side of things? What does good performance sound like? We have a good technical team and we do all the measurements on the products. But at the end of the day, the key performance indicator is uh, listening sound quality. So everything's based on, does it sound great? Yeah. And does it engage you into the music? So we put the music first and we want a product that makes you smile, makes your foot tap. And, you know, you have to do that with the measurements. It's, you can't do one or the other. You have to do them both together and you get a synergy out of that that gives you great products. Yeah. But absolutely, the, the single thing, our key performance indicator is great sound quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the... Uh the overlap, the kind of synergy that's in these products and in the world of, you know, audio engineering between science, measurement, numbers, empirical data, engineering skills, uh, you know, decades of expertise and, I don't, for want of a better word, magic. You know, when you sit down and you feel the hairs on the back of your neck go because you're just blown away by this performance and it's captured and conveyed so beautifully in a recording. That's just, you know, gold to me, that kind of experience that you have on these high-end pieces in particular. But um, you mentioned there about the Bluetooth, I believe it's the highest quality Bluetooth that you can possibly get. And this is kind of giving people the connectivity they want, the high end audio they want. But say if somebody comes in and starts and they open their phone, they crack open the Bluetooth, they crack open their favourite streaming service and they're just good to go. But do you think that people might be encouraged to embark on a journey of discovery for like higher end formats? Absolutely. And 
because of that, we're releasing a, a free Kabuz trial with these Ooh. products. So Kabuz is a high-res streaming service, and we're offering a free trial to encourage customers to give it a try and go to the very highest resolution music and, and dip their toes in that water. That's fantastic. Very good. I can see that really appealing to people. The thing of like bundling a trial with the products is a fantastic service to this new generation of consumers. I know there's a lot of people, like you were saying, Jim, earlier, this is cross-generational. Every generation, you know, boomers, Gen Xers like ourselves, millennials and Zoomers. This is a kind of journey that we're all on, I would say, towards higher quality, better convenience. And introducing that free tile is just kind of opening up a whole other area of experience. I can still remember the first time I tried high-resolution streaming. I just loved it. It knocked my socks off. There was all this presence and spaciousness and detail. It was everything I wanted that I didn't realise I'd been missing from lower resolution streaming. So if you're listening and you've got one of these products, please do check it out. Okay, so we're here at High End in Munich and JBL is not only meeting, but defining the standards for the new Luxuma market. So let's get to the headline act here. What are the new JBL products you've bought for the lucky delegates at High End to experience? <laughs> We've got a number of products that are here at the show. If you go back a few months ago, we did introduce the first range of classic series electronics. That was back in January at our CES event. And those products are now coming into production. So they are being shown for one of the first times here in, uh, in this market, for sure. So this would be a great chance for everyone to get a see and hear those products in person. In addition to that, we've got our complete range of Classic Series loudspeakers here, but we're actually introducing two new models. The L100 and the L82 have been upgraded to a Mark II version, wow. and that is being announced here this week at the show. So we're excited for everybody to see those. And then we've also got our, our black edition of the Classic Series loudspeakers that was introduced just right at the uh, turn of the year there. So this is another chance for people to see and hear those gorgeous looking products with that high gloss piano black painted finish on them. So a very sophisticated look on the uh, classic L100. Oh yeah, fantastic. So you got your L100 Mark II, your L82 Mark II. You've got a suite of those kind of classic separates. You've got the amplifier, you've got the music player, you've got the CD player, you've got the turntable, or the, when I say music player, I should say streamer perhaps. Yes. Um, but that kind of covers everything. It's like, you know, whether it's CD or USB or vinyl, it's all kind of under the one hood. It's what a fantastic uh, collection of equipment. You have, however you listen to music, it, yeah. you're catered for basically yeah. with this range. Wow. Wow, fantastic. And these are some good looking boxes as well. My goodness. It's just, I, I think it kind of took my breath away when I saw the amp in Las Vegas at Harmon Explore. I just thought, oh, this is just, you know, this is what I remember visiting homes of like, you know, folks who had like huge jazz collections on vinyl and they had a, the amazing amp and the beautiful turntable. They would have an amp like that and it sounded incredible. And this kind of captured that romance for me. It's just an incredible experience. Um, but talk to us a bit about the world of the prosumer, because it's not just the luxumers who are being looked after here at High End. You're also introducing two more devices for the prosumer side of things, but they are being seen through a very stylish Luxumer lens with a very sleek Scandinavian lines, I believe. Yeah, so we have our award-winning uh, JBL 4305P studio monitor and the recently introduced back at our Harman Explore event in January, the 4329P, which is the big brother to those. Those are both offered in standard finishes up till now of a natural walnut and a black walnut wood veneer cabinet on them. But what we're introducing uh, globally here at the high-end Munich show is a new white finish, a very Scandinavian-esque type of design to it. It's just a beautiful uh, whitewashed wood veneer, matte white finish on the horn, on the baffle. The grill cloth is a new uh, white grill cloth on it. So it's a very, very stylish look. Yeah. And when we go back to that uh, discussion we talked about, Luxumers expect this technology to integrate into their interiors. And so yeah. you may not have an interior design in your home that would welcome a natural walnut or a black walnut look. It's mm -hmm. a more retro look, but this more stylish white finish that we're introducing will really allow that customer that finds that speaker very, very engaging and highly coveted by them, but maybe the look wasn't right. So now I think with this third finish option, it's really going to turn some heads here at the show. Oh, for sure. I mean, when I heard the words Scandinavian design in the description, I just thought, wow, my wife is really going to like this. She's from Sweden and she's a designer. <laughs> she <laughs> so will like them. Tick, yeah. tick, tick. 
And, you know, this is a huge achievement. You know, you've kind of bought the latest engineering and, you know, the best possible sound reproduction and amplification, you know, made it seamless, connectivity, et cetera, et cetera. This is a huge, huge achievement. How did you make it happen? What was your secret weapon in kind of bringing all of this into the new collection? I think it's two groups of great experienced audio designers, one in Northridge in the US and one in Cambridge in the UK. And those years of experience all working together, it's two plus two, adds, comes up to more than four. Hell yeah. we all, the whole team builds on each other's experiences. Oh, that's fantastic. And, you know, you're the global director of engineering. How do you go about bringing out the best of these teams? Because it does feel like two plus two equals, you know, 5,000 yeah. <laughs> when we're talking about this stuff. I think everyone needs to have the passion for what yeah. they're doing. And yeah. that's certainly, you know, we employ people and we, the teams we have have great passion for audio. Um, and with that passion, we care about the people as well. We make it a nice place to work and the people enjoy their jobs and they love what they do. And it's about the team. You can't, you know, one person can't design these products. There's so many engineering and design aspects to the products. There's software, there's hardware, there's industrial design, there's user interface design, mm. multitude of different software disciplines, um, mechanical design. I hope I haven't missed anyone. Uh, <laughs> marketing, it, it, they all go and add yeah. to the pile to make a fantastic product. Brilliant, brilliant. So the teams in Northridge and Cambridge, if you're listening, big shout to you all. Apologies if we forgot everyone, but we, we mean all of you for sure. <laughs> I know we're recording live at high end, so it can be difficult to remember everyone, but uh, you're being celebrated here in Munich. And Jim, coming over to yourself, like many of the great people working at Harman, you're actually a collector of high end audio equipment. So how does it feel to be bringing this golden age of JBL style back to life, but with all the modern technology, the best connectivity and the best convenience. I think you know, what Paul just talked about was passion. And I yeah. think that's something that we see in all the employees that are part of our team. It's a, a wonderful thing that we're all so excited about this. We all have such fond memories. We all grew up with these products. And so to, to bring them back, uh, to be at shows and events like this, when you see the customers coming up and talking about the stories of how these products have found their ways into their lives and how they were meaningful events. You know, music is such a, a powerful and emotional thing for everyone. And so yeah. you have these fond memories throughout your life of different things and are related to the products that created the sound for you. So it's super thrilling for us to be able to to bring these products, to know what it means to people, to be able to provide that type of music, but to do so with such a historic brand like JBL and bring a bit of that history back to life again. With, with modern technology, modern features, as we've said, uh, fantastic. And I, I'm really excited about being here this week and seeing it all together in one big demo space and letting everyone see and hear it. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a great show. 100%. Absolutely. Great. So I have one final, very important question for each of you, and that is to choose a track for our Audio Talks title playlist. And we're going to go with yourself first, Jim. <laughs> Just one track. See, <laughs> there, here's the problem, right? <laughs> See, I have a playlist that we've created. It's uh, up to about 110 tracks right now. So uh, but so many great things to choose from. I'll throw one out here that's a, a recent one that one of our senior acoustic engineers has been using. So I believe she's a Dutch artist, Agnes Obel, oh, uh, yeah. and a song called The Curse. And it's just a fantastic female vocal, a cello, a piano. It's a beautiful cut. And we've been using that on a lot of the speakers that have been developed recently. And I believe he has included it in a couple of the playlists uh, that we do with Cobuzz. So when you get the trial that Paul mentioned earlier, we yeah. get a Cobuzz 90-day trial that you'll get with the products. We actually have carefully curated a playlist for each of these products. And I recall that that cut is in either the L75 MS playlist or perhaps the 4305P playlist, but a great cut. Oh, Highly yeah. recommend listening to it. Fantastic. So this playlist is one that you use for like testing the, the latest gear. Is that right? Yeah. We figure that when we're developing and, and listening, you know, that's a key part of this. There's so much science that goes into these, but at the end of the day, we sit down and listen. And so the, the cuts that we use to do yeah. that listening sessions on, we curate the playlist with those so that the customers can listen to the products that we were listening as they were being developed. <sighs> 
I love it. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. And I love the fact that they're bundled with the Kobos trial as well. That's fantastic. Okay, thank you, Jim. And over to your good self, Paul. What track are you going to drop into the playlist? Well, I'm going to pick one that was in, an artist that was introduced to me by my Gen Z daughters. Nice. Um, and I know it sounds awesome on uh, this classic range of products because I've been listening to it on these. It's Billie Eilish and Everything I Wanted. I love that track. That's absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to lower the tone completely and uh, choose a track by The Cramps called New Kind of Kick, just because their lead singer is called Lux Interior. So thank you both so much for bringing Sexy back to Luxury Audio and for joining us on the Harmon Audio Talks podcast live from High End in Munich. Thank you, Jim Garrett. Thank you very much. And thank you, Paul Neville. Thank you great to have you both here. Listeners, don't forget to subscribe, comment and share Audio Talks with your friends and family. If you're enjoying the Audio Talks series of podcasts, why not pop over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you get your favourite podcasts and leave a nice review. It really does mean a lot and it helps new listeners get to know about our legendary guests like Jim and Paul. In the meantime, for more exclusive content, some behind the scenes goodies and maybe even some competitions, connect with us over on the Instagram. You can find us at Audio Talks Podcast. We will be back soon for some more luxurious audio talks. Auf Wiedersehen from High End in Munich and see you next time. <laughs>